you've been following my Amiga related videos, you'll know that I've done a two-part video series on installing a slimline CD-ROM drive into my Amiga 1200. If you haven't watched these, I recommend watching them in order for this video to make a little more sense. The links to part 1 and 2 are in the description below. Now this third part initially was actually going to be me trying out some CDs, having a little fun, and having a look at the CD32 emulator which came with my ID Fix 97 disc as bundle software. However, things didn't fully work out the plan. I noticed that every time I inserted a CD it would start sp and it would start spinning and seeking. I noticed that some graphics colors on the workbench, you know, it just flickered and changed, which instantly rang alarm bells for me. I then attempted to copy a few files from my backup CD onto the hard drive, or the Amiga drive. But the CD drive kept disconnecting and reconnecting, rendering a failed copy process each time. Yes, I went through the disk cleaning process, freaking almost resurfaced the CD, cleaning it so much. <laughs> I was confused because I've already done an ADX to Amiga PSU hack with, an, with a 500 watt PSU. Okay, it may not actually be 500 watt, but it'd still be way more than enough. But something was niggling my neurons about the power and there not being enough. So I figured the traces on the motherboard, you know, going from the power input to the floppy power port, may not actually be able to handle enough current. Okay, so before I was powering my CD drive from the, you know, tapping it off the um, floppy drive wire and, you know, making a, a three-way cable. And um, yeah, at first it worked, it was very temperamental, every now and then it just didn't work. It just, it, and you saw what it did to the graphics, which is what makes me really paranoid. I mean, this is the only Amiga which I have, and um, I don't want to screw it up, uh, so I'm not going to risk this. So what I did, just to test it out, is I connected the data cable here, however the power cable, I connected it directly to the PSU, the same PSU that's powering the Amiga, but, you know, from a different, you know, cable line. So let's put a disk in this way, just to see if the power is the issue, or it might just be the, um, the CD drive itself. Okay, no, it works now. The issue is actually the power, I've just confirmed. My suspicion is the actual lines going to this port cannot carry enough current uh, to power the CD from this port. So even though you're putting a high power PSU in and you're getting continuity you know, directly from there, the lines are not thick enough to kind of carry that much current. And besides, it's going through a few things like probably the graphics or something, which is why it's going blue every time you insert a CD. And every time it tries to kind of track the disk. So I've got to, I mean, this is my figuring. I, have, I haven't looked this up, I haven't researched this. So if I'm wrong, forgive me, but <laughs> this is what I'm figuring. So, okay, rather than power the CD from the floppy drive, what I wish to do is connect some wires, um, solder some wires on the, directly from the input here, the power input and um, tap it off from the input rather than from there because you know I'm sh I'm probably taking much needed current from some of these chips along the, along the way here. What I need to do here is I have the three wires which I want to solder onto the insides of these but I want to check you know properly if I'm correct with you know which of these lines up. So I have my multimeter here. This at the bottom here this is plus 5 volts, the red one. This top one here is ground. And this top one here is 12 volts. And that's all I need for, you know, the CD. I mean, I'm looking at the diagram here, the Amiga PS Super Note diagram. And that's exactly, you know, the plug, what is on the plug. So I'm assuming that that's, you know, when you plug it in, it's going to be like that. Because I've got these extra thin sharp probes. And I've inserted one into the, the bottom where it says plus 5 volts. Yep, that's correct. Yes, plus 12 volts. Okay, so I need to just solder a wire on each of these. Because that top one has thinned, and now just thin this end one here. I already put like a touch of flux on them. 
Okay, so the first thing, the first one I'm going to do is the one which I'm most nervous about, and that is the plus five bolts, and that is the one at the bottom. These are very nice thick wires. Okay, so the first wire, as you've noticed, I've uh, soldered it onto the bottom one. I hope this is... I think you're getting a better view than I am. <laughs> But that bottom one is solar into that. I was worried about that the most, so I did it first. And uh, yeah, it seems to be good. Uh, and it's quite strong as well. Um, the wire is getting hot. Ow. <laughs> getting pliers next to all the wires. So the only one left now is this end one, which is plus 12 volts. Okay, so these three seem to be fine here. Okay, so I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna cable tie this. Just to give it some. Because I've just added the cable tie there, just to give you know those three wires wires some some stability. <laughs> some stability. So that yeah, it doesn't move around so much. I'm gonna put another one there actually as well. And uh, I've added some cable ties so this, you know, less tension on, you know, the wires kind of strengthens them. Same with this audio one. And yeah, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the Amiga on and I'm going to test the voltages coming from these three. I'm very freaking carefully. I'm going to disconnect my Aka and anything else that's kind of, you know, the bare Amiga, just in case there's any accidents or anything like that. I'm positive that I'm not going to lose anything, but... You just never know, do you? <laughs> just in case. Okay, so I have my alligator clips connected to this, uh, which are connected to the meter. And uh, this is a five volt, it's far away from anything else. Okay, so good news. We have a five volt reading, 4.9 volt, it's close to the five volt. And we have our wonderful Amiga screen. <laughs> it's nice to see this, and it's nice to see it working. <laughs> right, let's test, the, let's switch this off and twist twist the 12 volt <laughs> line. So I'll take this off here and put it on the 12 volt line. That is there. We're fine about that. Let me check the meter reading. And it says 12.75. Fantastic. Directly coming from there. I know it's gonna work. I knew it was gonna work, but I was paranoid. So I needed to kind of put my mind at ease, didn't I? <laughs> you know, it's it's not a small thing if you screw up the power on your Amiga, you've fried it. I will, those um, pins that are, you know, for the shielding, I'll just put the wire underneath one of them and bend it down so it acts as a, a bit of a cable grip there. You know what I mean? It's a bit of security there, isn't there? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect these three, uh, solder these three onto a floppy power connector cable uh, ready for my, you know, CD drive. So back over there. <laughs> okay, so we have our three friends over here and uh, I have this uh, floppy connector that I'm going to connect to them. So I'm going to solder those on and this is my chance to use this heat gun that I bought and I got some heat shrink tubing which uh, I think somebody in the uh, comments um, said, you know, sh heat shrink tubing, get some. <laughs> so I thought, okay, yeah, fair enough. I need some. Yes, I do take note of your comments. <laughs> Even if I sometimes I'm too busy to reply. So it's just kind of like get. Oh, I don't have to use freaking electrical tape anymore. I'm happy about that. To be honest, it's just so annoying. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's like I had a couple of cable ties on this so to make it. Now we connect my CD drive to it and we test it and everything. So back over there now. <laughs> okay, just before I wrap this up, what I'm gonna do is go through a summary of the the fixes and the improvements which I have done to this setup to so the CD um, mod or hack or whatever it is. 
<laughs> and um, I'm going to go through the things that I've discovered. Okay, so the first thing which I did today was, of course, you know, take, change the source of power for this drive. First it was tapped on the floppy connector, and now I've decided to kind of um, tap it from the socket itself. So it's directly coming from there. However, changing this thing here did not sort out the issue, and I will tell you exactly why. First of all, I wish to say that my, my videos are not actually tutorials, not actually full-on tutorials. It's just me sharing what I'm doing and I wish to, you know, show you my mistakes and all that I have done and all that I've discovered so that, you know, it saves you all this headache <laughs> of going through it yourself. Well, I'm using an ADX power supply. Now, this is powering, this has got enough, you know, it's like 500 watts. So now this is how I'm connecting it to the Amiga. Uh, if you want to see the, the hack, which I do of this, the video of the hack, I've left it in the description below and also this letter I in the corner here. If you click on it, you'll get a list of videos going all the way down here, down this side, <laughs> because um, I'm referring to a lot of videos here, you know, so do check those out. Anyway, back to this. Now, this is how I connected it to the Amiga you know, power, and the issue which I was having, and by the way, this is not, I don't leave this uncovered, I've just uncovered it for, to show you. <laughs> you know, I don't leave this like, hanging around like this. <laughs> the issue I was having is not enough power going to this. I only had a single yellow, black, and red, you know, going to this. Now, what I decided to do was, out of all this, get, um, pick out one more yellow, one more red, one more uh, black, and then just like, you know, put them all, double them up. And this sorted out the issue because it allowed, you know, the power to go through. I mean, this is a fairly cheap PSU and I did notice at the beginning that these wires were thin. You will notice in the video that I even mentioned it. It's like, these wires feel a bit thin. And they were. Well, they are. <laughs> they didn't change. But, um, so I advise doubling it up or else there's just no point having, you know, all this, all this power if it cannot travel through <laughs> the freaking wires. Okay, now I wish to ask you experts out there who are experts on the Amiga, uh, how much current uh, power is allowed to pass along the board from the socket all the way to the floppy drive? Are you able to power, safely power, a CD-ROM from here or anything else like this? Okay, so even though I have done this um, hack or mod or whatever you wish to call it, and personally, I am more comfortable with this because it's coming directly. However, I don't wish to make somebody go through this pain of doing all this because this was seriously precision work. <laughs> I don't want somebody to go through the pain of doing all this when they can simply do the, the flappy hack originally. So please, you know, if you have any information on this, on if they can safely do this, then please, you know, comment below just in case anybody's interested in doing it. And I know quite a few of you who are wanting to do this. Okay, so now that we got the power side of the issue out of the way, <laughs> let's move on to the data side, the, the connections and everything. You'll have noticed that I've got a thinner cable for this. Um, basically, before using this, before this cable, I was using one of these. Now, these, you know, we know them very well if we've dealt with um, IDE cables. It takes up so much of the space, the airspace in this, uh, in this um, airspace with the free. <laughs> That's, that means, you know, signals in the air. I mean, you know, the space, the, it takes up all the free space in the idea. And um, <laughs> there's not much, I mean, there's like reduced airflow and I'm not comfortable with that. So I decided to look into this and get one of these. The CD-ROM drive I had before inside here, well, it's a DVD-ROM drive actually, both of them are DVD writers. I had this, I had both of these and I decided to use the second one. Why? Because they're, they're probably different brand, but the same spec. And this, this cable just does not work. I mean, it shows up, however, when you click on the icons or try and access the drive, it takes forever and then it just gives up. So it just, the data wasn't just flowing. It turns out that this requires, okay, let me just show you here the differences. You have this kind of IDE cable, which has 40 connectors now, and you have 
this kind of ID cable, the ADA133 or 100, which has like 80 cables, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I have no idea how this thing works, this 80 connect, 80 way one works, or whatever it is, because uh, they have, they both have 40 connectors. So yeah, I, I don't know how they work, <laughs> how this you know works. And maybe they're doubled. This CD-ROM works with this, but does not work with this. Now these thin cables here, they're actually this one. It's basically this, you know. It's... Now, as I said, this drive does not work with this cable, but this drive does, which is strange. And there's no, you know, uh, reduction in performance or anything like this. It just works just as this did on this cable. Do you know what I mean? So I just don't get that. If my, my, over, uh, my, uh, my overall point, <laughs> my overall point is <laughs> that if you're gonna get one of these, make sure you test your drive against you know a, one of these first before you kind of spend the money on this, because just in case it doesn't work. Okay, so we got that out of the way now, <laughs> and I think that's 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 basically it. So yeah, there is gaps in my knowledge with, with regards to little things like this. Um, so do fill me in below <laughs> in the comments if you know better, if you know more. Okay, so I've booted up now and uh, everything seems fine so far. Let's see if um, the CD drive uh, works well. Okay, cool. It comes up. Okay, so everything seems to be working well. Fantastic! And it seems stable. Last time it kept glitching, I kept having to um, take the CD out and put it back in. Like open and close the tray for it to sometimes register. So it definitely was a power issue. So yay! I'm gonna work in CD drive now in here. So thanks so much for joining me here today. Thank you for your likes, your shares, do leave your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. Be sure to click on that bell icon for notifications. I am on Twitter and Flickr and of course the links to those are in the about section of my channel. And for now I will say adios. <laughs>